I was I, this was my first interview and I got select and I didn't even bother to interview in any other schools. Uh, but you, given the choice, if I had uh, if I was selected in any other school, I would have definitely chosen CU over uh, <laughs> okay. over other schools. You know because um, CU it is. <laughs> That's Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times saying the interview process was a very pleasurable one. People were very supportive. On that mm -hmm. note, do you mind giving us some clarity about what does the interview process look like? We've heard he hearsay, but to hear it from you would, would really mean something. Sure. Uh, so, uh, CEO uh, interview uh, day is one of its kind because I think it's the only school which conducts interview and bench exam on a single day. It's a, an eight hour long uh, event. So it's very exhausting, but at, this, uh, at the same time, it's very uh, interesting and you know, the, the, the way they carry out the whole uh, event is quite uh, amazing it's it, it's very organized you never feel lost and every all there's always someone or the other to guide you or host you i mean the, there are a lot of students out there with whom you can talk and they're very friendly so uh, to start with uh, the in the event um there's a small uh, meet and greet session firstly in the morning where the isp one students and the uh, staff faculty members uh, greet you with a huge big smile on their face and uh, there's a small greet and meet like you meet your fellow uh, interviewer interviewees and uh, the staff uh, followed by breakfast and which is very tasty <laughs> which is very yummy <laughs> Okay, and then uh, I get uh, distracted by food. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, after the uh, breakfast, there uh, the students are taken to the amphitheater, where the batch of eighty is uh, divided into two batches. That is batch A and batch B. Uh, before that, uh, they discuss in the amphitheater. They discuss the agenda for the day, like how the event is going to be held. They explain and they tell you more of uh, more about CEO and the fun aspects of it as well and the academia part of it as well. Uh, after that, so the batch A uh, has morning interview and afternoon uh, bench exam and vice versa for the batch B. They have the morning bench exam and the afternoon interview. So the batch A, uh, which has the morning interview, is then divided into four parts like a b c d and the interview session uh, has four aspects to it which is one is a school tour where they just go around the school and uh, just give you a brief idea where the clinics are and where are the classes held and stuff uh, second uh, the second is a student panel discussion where uh, the current interviewing students are uh, uh, with the uh, one-on-one -on -one basis with the, the ISP students. So then you can any anything that you want to ask them about life uh, as a student or uh, how is life in uh, Colorado, Denver, about um, how, how is it with anything, like you can doubt, ask them any doubts. Um, then the third is a 30 to 45 minutes interview session, which is um, of, which is held by four, uh, a panel of four, that is two faculty, two students, and it is anything between uh, uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and it is based on personal and professional ethical questions. So they also ask about some, uh, they ask about a uh, clinical um, cases, some treatment planning, radiographic interpretation and stuff. And uh, they don't want you to go in the details like of treatment planning and everything, uh, but it's always uh, good to uh, tell them about treatment planning and stuff, but they don't want you to be very, very uh, right on the radiographic interpretation. I mean, you just cannot uh, do any kind of mistake on the radiographic interpretation. Uh, rest is uh, the treatment planning and everything is still fine. 
uh, about uh, there's a personality te testing uh, written exam which is uh, where they take you to a room and uh, they uh, ask you to write down some answers for the personality based these questions like it's very casual i mean they give you scenarios which are uh, like you know if this happens how would you tackle the situation just to know that you are a normal sane thinking person <laughs> and not some crazy crazy person that i'll go to the <laughs> station for uh, like you know cops i'll call for cops and stuff so they just want uh, sane thinking people uh so this is about the interview part then in the afternoon uh, whoever has the bench exam it's a two and a half hour long uh, bench exam where they ask you a class two prep on premolars or molars then a pfm or an fgc on magazine mandy anything uh, molars i am not sure if uh, um, they would go and ask anterior they would actually restrict to uh, premolars and molars but i just don't it's better to practice everything uh, and then there's a only wax prep exam which is equally important so this is uh, the whole about the bench exam so this is how the whole day is uh, conducted yeah we just have one question from uh, dr sonia who is asked it on the radiograph part can you answer that before we move further yeah, what is that question yeah um i think the question is exactly like can you give an example of what kind of radiograph you got and what were, what were the treatment planning questions you had to answer uh well i i don't remember but yeah it was a periapical uh, mandibular left radio radiograph which had a pfm crown and a root canal and a carious region on it so it was very it was a, it was not very tricky you just have to say that i this is a, a mandibular left uh, periapical uh, radiograph and uh, i see okay uh, and it's okay to take time i mean during my interview process i i was i uh, made it pretty sure that i take uh, 30 seconds more and i told them that is it okay if i take time so i i just uh, took a big brief pause i evaluated the x and uh, they were pretty okay with it it's okay if you stop So take a long pause so to answer right and wrong, right? And but take time. So, uh, so I took a brief pause and I answered uh, like you know the pipe manipulator or radiograph, and it uh, shows uh, on this number two, like. Uh, uh so they also want you to uh, get right on the tooth number as well because many international students follow uh, different uh, fdi uh, or palmer or some like you know different uh, numbering system so so uh, it's uh, get hang of the tooth numbers as well right and treatment planning i just said that i will uh, the patient if the patient wants to uh, go ahead and save the tooth then i will definitely recommend him uh, a root canal treatment and uh, followed by a crown uh, if it, if, and they were convinced with it and uh, they also asked me like uh, so what is your further uh, prognosis for this patient it's very general i mean uh they don't want you to be a dentist already they are getting you into school because um they want teach you, they want to teach you so just interpretation is important apart from that uh, just give, give a brief idea that what would you do and uh, give the options as well like uh, if the patient is not okay i will um, ask him to extract the teeth like that okay. thank you Yeah, sorry, I'm not over to you. All right. Um, so, as Joey said, radiographic interpretation is where they try to look at your treatment philosophy. And as she said, there's no right or wrong. You just come mm -hmm. up with what treatment you think is suitable for them. And the important pointers for that, as she said, would be recognizing whether it's the right or left side, what tooth number it is, and if if you can just di diagnose what what you see, just tell them what you see, and that's what's important with radiographic interpretation. 
and yeah. we'll talk more about that once you guys bring up more questions. Um, but I'm going to skim through the next question if Karthik's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we heard about the interview process, Julie, and uh, can you tell us what helped you succeed in a CEO interview? And especially because you got an early acceptance, mm -hmm. uh, what did you do that maybe these guys could take inspiration from? Yeah. Um, firstly, uh, call, um, for Colorado, it's the uh, it's in major caps lock. Kill your bench is the ultimate statement for Colorado. Uh, except like Colorado gives a lot of importance to bench exam. You have to kill your bench uh, in order to get an early acceptance. They also consider it like they are very considerate and they consider like but not critical obviously and you should be knowing that by now that what are critical errors in a prep in a uh, prep preparation so for me um basically see you evaluates you on three bases that is your application then your interview and your bench exam so when you ace all the three uh they uh, uh, all the three has to be on but then they send you an early acceptance so mm -hmm. uh, i think what worked for me during my interview uh, was um, that i am a very fun loving and like you know very um, happy go lucky girl and that is what um, that like that is what I was during my interview. I was not very under pressure that I have to make this happen. I Somebody actually told me on my seniors during the interview that, you know, enjoy this process. Enjoy this day because you have been dreaming about this day for your, for like past two, three years. I mean, uh, for me, at least it was, it was my first interview. So, uh, so for me, it was like, oh my God, am I really here? Shit, this is, is, it, this is, is this really happening? So for me, I was like really enjoying that day. And it, even during the interview, I was very casual about, uh, I was cracking jokes. I was having fun. For me, it was like, I was the only person uh, laughing at my own jokes in the whole room. And for, at the end of the interview, I was a bit skeptical about it. Like, you know, uh, because I had prepped my answer such like I was uh, big, but I because I, I was not being someone else. I, I am that kind of person who keeps everyone around me entertained. So um, I had prepped my answer such that, you know, I will keep them entertained because at the end of the day, even they get bored about like, you know, uh, hearing the same answers. So, but at the end of the day, like I was laughing at my own jokes and having fun and they were sitting there with a straight face. And when I came out, I was like, oh my God, either this is going, uh, like, uh, it, it's going either way. Either it's going to make it or break it, like, you know, like that. So, uh, but thankfully, um, so I got an early acceptance. And... Uh, so I want to explain, I want to share this thing, like, you know, how my answers were. Uh, uh, so, you know, they asked me, uh, te like, tell us something about yourself that is not uh, written in your application. And I was like, uh, I am a fun loving person. And uh, so, uh, sometimes I feel that I can fly. And I hence tried jumping off a cliff. And I took a, a brief pause after that. I just was evaluating everybody's expressions, like how they are reacting to it. And then I laughed and corrected myself. I mean, I did bungee jumping. So like, you know, I was having fun there. And uh, so basically that is how, I think that is what helped me. That uh, just being yourself, being uh, um, confident, but not being overly confident, being humble and uh, not being very competitive i think colorado likes um nice human beings like every every school likes nice human beings but colorado likes very uh, a tad bit sensitive and emotional people to so show them i think uh, show them your passion towards dentistry how empathetic you are towards uh, people they want to have a class who are, who help each other like now our class is uh, is competitive but not to that extent that they will uh, hamper each other's growth they are very helping they are very um, 
like you know constructive so that is how that is what colorado likes about people they would definitely select uh, students who have a gpa of 3.7 but are very um, helping considerate to people than a person who has a 4.0 gpa than and but who is very competitive and who will not let others grow like you know i'm not giving out this fact but this is just what i feel and what i have experienced maybe someone else won't uh, agree with me but but this is what i experienced or i feel mm-hmm. oh yeah i think yeah this is what uh, i i was just being myself <laughs> all right i guess uh, that that's a very difficult uh, state to achieve uh, to being you know being comfortable with yourself and yet not uh, being uncomfortable in the interview uh, mm-hmm. but thank you for you know, taking us kind of through your spiritual perspective of of bringing joy to the, to the table and and using that as a factor to elevate your chances in the interview um we had a lot of questions and i'm going to divert from the original discussion guide we had but we had a lot of questions uh, around the bench test so people have asked mm-hmm. how many hours did you practice how did you practice oh. in the bench what words do you use what preparations did you have to perform were you using loops or not so if you can like do a deep dive on bench the, you said like kill the bench and see you so how do we kill the bench and see you the prep mm-hmm. and what does the bench look like if you could do that um probably we'll take a minute to answer that mm-hmm. joey if you can do us a favor your internet is dropping quite often so if you can disconnect the remaining oh, at home from internet let's take a minute i'll switch off your video just for the time being uh take a minute okay. and come back um and okay, sure. know, sip some water in the meanwhile okay cool all right uh i've sent a link to a to a google form on on everybody's chat box if you fill in your email id within that uh, we'll make sure that you get the access to the zoom video preparation so just take a minute open your chat box click the link and fill in your email id all right Okay. Yeah, and just one more question I want to call out which is which is part of the mm-hmm. uh bench preparation is can we change the position of our mannequin in the bench test? Okay, so in general they are asking you to address certain things about the bench uh in you know can you use loops can you bring your own bars will they provide you a set of bars and what do they look like and uh, how did you prepare for your bench right this question mhm okay so uh, to start with colorado uh, let's see you bring uh, all sorts of instruments you want to have with you all kind of bars that you want to get uh, all kind of instruments anything uh including a uh, matrix band which i used for uh, to prevent from uh, the adjacent tooth damage so colorado it's not considered cheating you can uh, use uh, matrices as uh, to prevent uh, from adjacent tooth damage and uh, they provide you with all the basic instruments like a probing uh, uh, like a probe uh then uh, mouth mirror and 
uh, bursts which are basic like um, 330 329 and uh, i think uh, i'm not sure and the crown cutting burr which was it i don't remember the number nora do you <laughs> which do we use i, the crown I took my own burr. burrs uh, <laughs> Colorado does yeah, give you exactly. a good service. Even I took my own. If, if they're going to give you an FGC prep, which I think I got, they did have a shampoo burr in that. So Colorado is very considerate. Yeah, they had the shampoo burr. Yeah. So you, yeah. you don't have to worry about that. Even I got my own set of burrs because I was very, I, I didn't follow a particular uh, like you know format that uh, for this i uh, use this burr only i was whenever i felt comfortable i used to switch between burrs so you know i had a um, my own block which i used and i never bothered to even use uh, what for that to give because i was uh, accustomed to use my own set of burrs so i don't really know but they gave which uh, which are um, I think which are enough if you don't have your own stuff which uh, you can sustain without um, your uh, instruments as well and uh, apart from that uh, mm, this next question was next question uh, loops yeah how that, can they prepare for the bench like how many hours can they you know work or what should what should they focus on in terms of what kind of prep should they be practicing mm -hmm. for yeah right so um for me, it was I prepped <laughs> when I got, once I got an interview call. Um, I started prepping myself such that uh, uh, that I had to kill the bench exam. Mm -hmm. At least I I hoped for giving my best. So I prepped like uh, six hundred eight, and this is just a number. I mean, uh, because. Uh, I, uh, my seniors told me that uh, just prep how much ever you can and you feel that this is the best you can do. So always like, you know, uh, I have seen students who have done just, uh, who have practiced for 30 teeth, who practice just 30 teeth and still they got, they got selected. So it varies from person to person. It's like for me, I, uh, I prepped 600 teeth or 700 teeth now odd and uh, i used to prep like for the entire day for eight to nine hours it was my only agenda i was on f2 visa i was a dependent i had nothing to do <laughs> i used to just sit at home and just do the preps watch tv and just do the preps that's it so uh, that's what i did you have to be damn serious serious about your bench exam um time yourself like uh, if, um, if you are giving exam every day, so set yourself uh, a timer for FGC PFM on uh, on the teeth and a wax prep. Wax prep is equally important. People think it's not of equal importance, but it is very important and it is given equal uh, marks as well. So uh, uh, wax prep. And I used to do a prep, prep for my wax uh, preparation at home only. I had got the wax at home and I used to do the carving. Yeah, for the instruments, wax, for the wax carving, uh, they don't, they just give two instruments. That is your lacron carver and uh, what is that? I don't Quite recollect the name. Sorry? The clear discoid. Yeah, the clear discoid, right. And uh, so... Um, of only for the wax carving, um, they don't let you use any other instruments, but you have to use those two instruments only which Colorado gives. Okay. But for the other rest exercises like class two and uh, FGC PFM, you can use any other instruments. Okay. So um, yeah, just uh, practice a lot until and unless you know that this is the best you can do. And for uh, I heard. I think you asked a question about if you can move the mannequin. Yeah. So uh, for mannequin, you can uh, uh, move the mannequin uh, upwards and downwards. You can uh, tilt it heads right to left, uh, just like a, a patient can uh, move. 
like you know it's pretty uh, flexible that was i think it was it was not very difficult yeah the exam is with cheeks so start uh, to pra- like uh, try to get if, uh, some cheeks available in the market and practice with that because sometimes it's difficult to retract those cheeks and get um, uh the vision proper so practice with that i used loops but those were not the just the amazon loops which uh, which were not very uh, like you know mm-hmm. uh, but, uh, it it were useful for me it uh, it helped me definitely so having loops is uh, a plus point if you guys can get uh, the loops and start practicing with it uh, it's really very helpful so start practicing with loops and start practicing with cheeks on your typodont and start practicing uh, with the rod on uh, so that you know you have that indirect uh, access indirect vision that means awesome uh, i want to add something to what juhi said just to that what you favor can you also yeah. summarize what juhi said because yeah. there are a lot of interruptions uh, okay. sure <laughs> okay to <laughs> summarize um so historically see you what, what kind of preps that they make you do during the bench exam would be class 2s which can be modo or mods and uh, then they make you do either a pfm or an fgc and then they do make you do a wax up on a cast which has an onlay or an inlay prep so the kind of preps that you want to keep doing this would or be in pre molars and molars uh both upper and lower and as juvi said indirect vision is extremely important so keep practicing that in terms of mannequin you can move it uh, to an extent but the difficult thing over there is the cheek the cheek is going to be pretty tough so she recommends that you guys get a cheek that you can practice with so that you can practice retracting that another thing is you can bring your own instruments you can bring your own set of burrs colorado does not have restrictions on that you can even bring uh, the small matrices the matrices that you can put in between the teeth to protect the adjacent teeth from damage um another thing th- that she covered was in wax up you that's the only exercise in the bench exam where you cannot take your own instruments so you'll be given only two instruments one is the cleoid discoid and i think the other one is the lacron scarver so those two things are things that you can use i think that covers the gist of the bench another important thing that joey said i want to reemphasize is please practice with the timer on because the two and a half hours will fly when you have like two preps you'll have a class 2 and a and a crown prep and a wax up so time yourself and sit in you know practice like you were doing a mock bench that's how you can get there and you either the, these guys have another question for you which is did you take any course to prepare for your bench exam and how did it help you so take a quick minute and address that so that we, we can get that question out of the way yeah i actually uh, took help from dr stevenson and uh, i think whatever i have learned is from dr stevenson he is the best coach uh he guided me very well i think that's where me and nora also met uh, for the first time and uh, uh he makes your basics uh, concepts very clear which is very important for the bench exam because you know uh, uh having your concepts clear what uh, the examiners are wanting to look in a preparation is very important the measurements might differ you know uh colorado sometimes give you measurements which are different than the ideal ones mm-hmm. uh, they want you to prep um, a maybe uh, a preparation which is more than 2 mm deep so just you have to have your concepts clear how much they also uh, pre- uh, guide you with the uh, clearance how much clearance you need to have on the buckle and the lingual so um, so it's very the numbers are very important it might differ uh so just have a look on the sheet which the colorado university gives you during the bench exam have a look have a, a keep a tab on it uh they are very precise and particular about the measurements which they give you and not the measurements which you have been practicing all the while so uh keep a tab on it and um, uh yeah so just uh, be particular about the measurements and uh, keep practicing okay juvi one more question uh is that so we discussed about the interview format and we know that because of this covid-19 situation it's not going to be like that 
Uh, these guys are going to have, at least for the first batch, it's confirmed that they're going to have a Zoom interview, um, which is going to be for 25 minutes. So what do you think they have to keep in mind and how do you think mm -hmm. it will be different from the personal interview and what can they do to prepare for this? Yeah. Uh, so um, this is going to be the first time they're going to have an, a Zoom interview, which is also going to be very different for CU as well. So right now, even uh, uh, we are not being informed anything about uh, how they are going to be. We are still volunteering. Like I said, CU involves ISP students in the interview. So we even we are still volunteering about how are they going to conduct the interview. It is definitely going to be different, and uh, but I'm sure that it won't change the uh, selection criteria. I mean, uh, the judgment criteria would still be the same. They want to know how good of a person you are, how humble, how compassionate you are. Uh, so th um, that's it. And for now, I think uh, the bench, I think that uh, that is what they have told us. They'll conduct a Zoom interview for now. And then followed by that, there will be a student panel session where uh, you can, uh, the students, uh, the interviewees will have a chat with the current ISP students uh, and they can ask questions or doubts, anything uh, they have. And uh, after that, um, the bench exam will be la conducted later uh, um, after the interview. These will be shortlisted and then they'll be sent a uh, bench exam. Well, I mean, they'll be send an invitation for the bench. Mm -hmm. That's, That's awesome. what I've. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so so one thing is about like how Zoom might affect CU interviews, uh, and I guess we're mm -hmm. gonna get some help for the students over here as well. But apart from that, and this is an open question to both Dr. Nora and Dr. Joey, if you can quickly mm -hmm. tell students uh, what questions can they expect in the interview based on what you've yeah. had in your own experience and what you've had from friends describe them to you and how do you prepare for those questions? So like what questions and then preparation? I think we can probably close the webinar with that and then open to Q&A after that. So uh, you can, mm -hmm. you know, you can pass it on uh, with this. This can be the last question, which will be super important. Okay. Let's have Julie go first. Okay. Uh, guest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Nora. <laughs> okay. So uh, in regards to the preparation, I would say, uh, uh, I have a lot to say, actually. I would say that jot down uh, some important uh, points of your life, like you have, uh, how have you have handled uh, situations. Uh, because, you know, sometimes it's difficult to uh, remember those. You know, uh, jot down some interview, commonly asked interview questions, which is easily available on the internet. Uh, if you go to a CEU interview, dental questions, dental interview questions, you'll get a list of questions. Just write down, write down your uh, talking in front of a mirror or with a family member uh, so that you get used to um, talking. Uh, and you're not nervous about it. Secondly, I will say that, yeah, like I said, Jordan, some important, uh, things that happened in your life. I want to say this because I, uh, um, and like uh, a friend of mine was interviewing and I was interview. She had a wake up two hours uh, dental uh, career and I asked her what did you do apart like from uh, just like you know what did you do in those two years and she was like no I had no sitting at home and later I found out like she later on told me after a long while that she was taking care of her sick father and uh, uh, which is a big deal. I mean, uh, universities want to know about all these things that uh, why were you off dentistry for so what are the things that happened in your life that makes them think, okay, this is a responsible person. She was not just uh, enjoying like, you know, having a vacation or just, but she was taking care of her family. This shows that you are a responsible person. How compassionate you are uh, so you know involve you should try to involve these things in your interview answers uh, you know make a make a point of uh, things that happened 
secondly i also want to uh, share that if possible make a portfolio or anything like you know be it dentistry or be it anything um like if you are good at photography if you are good at painting so if you are good in sketching make a portfolio of it um or i know a lot of schools actually don't accept these things but what's the harm i mean if you just carry it with you uh if you are good in anything that right? i'm sure everybody has uh, a quality which you are very good at it so just make a portfolio of it and you can always and during the interview you can always offer that you know i'm having this portfolio with me do you want to have a look at it and this is and i uh, like for even see you on other universities they do accept they want to see what you are good at a uh, good in so uh, just give a gist of uh, things like you know in the portfolio that you have done and they like so uh, it's a plus point if you have everything ready i want to uh, experience my uh, friend is that um, he uh, he was asked this question that um, tell us something which is you he okay it's very it's okay dr joey dr joey we are losing you uh, uh he told no i do have it with okay hello yeah we lost you for a bit in between uh lost you when you started talking about your friend's experience okay 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 i'll yeah. start over is this better can you hear me now yeah this is perfect better now yes. okay so then uh, I, my friend he was interviewing at one of the universities and uh, he was asked this question that uh, tell us something that is very unique about you and he told that okay i can solve a rubric cube in one minute and uh, so uh, the interviewer said that okay it's very easy to say that when you don't have one with you and uh, he said who told uh, that i don't have it i do have it in my bag and so the professor said okay so then make uh, let's make this deal that uh, um, i'll give you the five minutes three minutes or uh, let's say five minutes and we'll uh, solve the rubric cube simultaneously with the interview if you are able to do it i'll offer you a seat right away and uh, fortunately he was able to do it uh, in two minutes like obviously he wasn't offered the seat uh, right away but um, it's it actually shows that you are a multitasker and uh, you have you, you know you can impress the faculty with such little things it uh, it doesn't have to be a national award or a lot of things in your profile like, you know i want this or that It's very little things that you can impress the faculty with with just a rubric cube you know and it's always better to have it uh, with you whatever it is like like i said uh, a rubric cube or a portfolio of your paintings or your sports medals or in photographies or uh, photography whatever you have done just uh, put it in a portfolio and present it to them you never know you might just get lucky and they get say yes to yes i want to have a look at it awesome thank you that was very unique experience <laughs> over to you nora yeah so from what joey says if if you ask me to put it bluntly admissions committee want to see that you have a life out of dentistry they don't want you to yeah completely engross yourself in dentistry they know that you're passionate about dentistry that's why you've come this far that's why you're in that room so a, a couple of people asked what should i answer for tell me about yourself um i'm not going to tell that be yourself <laughs> because i i want you all to know that you have to be yourself at least that's something that you must have realized from talking to julie because you can see that in her interview she was herself she was just as happy and just as excited as she is right now so all of you guys have to try to <laughs> reduce that nervousness and that can, that you can do by talking to your fellow interviewees that that's in the actual interview but because it's a zoom interview i'd urge for you guys to practice it with friends uh, create a zoom call and start practicing so that you see what you're doing wrong like i have a habit of moving my hands too much right so 
if the other person sees that, I might not know it, but if you if you tell me, Noura, you're moving your hands too much, then I might keep it like this, right? So it's very distracting. Right. You have to pay attention to Zoom interviews and we'll talk more about that in the video that we'll give you. But about these interviews, write down in points for each question, like take the questions for behavioral, you'll find it on the internet. There are so many sources available. In fact, even Capit Simplified has an exhaustive list of questions, which is available for you for free. Just look at it and take those questions down, write some points, don't write paragraphs because that makes you want to, you know, just mug it up and, and try to vomit it in front of the interviewers and they're very smart. They can, they know that you're, you know, overprepared. So as Juvi said, put it in points, look at the points and talk about it. When it comes to tell me about yourself, you don't have to be, get all professional about it. Just tell about yourself. If you're talking to a friend and they ask like, hi, where are you from? What do you, what do you tell? You don't start gisting your CV. So it's like that. And what Juvi said is very interesting. Talk about your hobbies. Talk about what you're interested in. Uh, they like to know that you have all these things. They like to know that you multitask, especially because DDS or DMD, it's a very, very uh, stressful course. So they want to know that you have something that can keep you, you know, relaxed, that, that you can go to when things get very stressful. So you want to keep that in mind. Other, and I don't want to go over the same things Juvie did and be repetitive. Uh, but I'm going to address the ethical scenarios question that you guys asked about. Colorado does ask a lot of ethical based scenario questions. So what is ethics? Ethics doesn't have a proper definition. It's just what's right or wrong according to you. Um, so you just have to think at that situation, what do you think is right for you? It might not be you know, legally right or legally wrong, but what is morally right is, is what you want to know. A simple example is, is if you go to a shop and you buy something and they give you extra change. So you come out of the shop and you see that you have extra change and you can choose to have it and go back or you can just go back and give it back to him, right? So you're not gonna get caught. Nobody's gonna put you in jail for this extra few cents in your hand. But morally what is right to do is go back and give that extra change. So that's a, that's a very simple example. But I'll have Juvi talk about what certain examples of ethical questions that you might come across and how to answer them. Yeah, um, so, uh, pause for a minute there. Uh, we got some poll responses, which all of you can now see. Yeah. Um, it looks like the majority of our students are struggling in bench prep, uh, and that's okay. And we've kind of said that too, it was Dr. Stevenson's training that helped bridge that gap. Uh, so we know over that a little more, but we also have across the board a lot of struggle, especially with uh, critical thinking questions being a good number of that. So let's address critical thinking questions. What what are those questions and how do we answer? For critical thinking, Karthik, you'd be the best person to talk about it. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because of the training you gave me. So why don't you give them a short description about what they are and an example? Um, okay, maybe after Joey talking about uh, the topic. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Karthik. Please go ahead. <laughs> okay, all right, sure. Uh, so, so, or I'll ask you a question, uh, a critical thinking question, and try to address it. Okay. How many okay. dental chairs are there in the U.S.? <laughs> okay, uh, so critical thinking is into different parts, and this kind of question is a quantitative analysis question. You're, you're going to make a prediction based on a set of constraints or a set of assumptions. So the way you answer this is by first mentioning what your assumption is and then talking them through the process. The number of dental chairs in the whole of US, correct? Yes. So I would probably start with the population of US, which is 330 million. I would say that I, I, my assumption is that for every thousand individuals, Americans out there, there's one dentist that brings the number down to uh, 330,000 dentists. And this may be an exaggeration, but 330,000 dentists, given my assumption. For each of these 330,000 dentists, my assumption is that um, at, at least 50% of them have their own private clinic, and then there are other people who come to this clinic and work for them as associates. And, um, so if they are sharing, two dentists share at least one share on an average life, you know, lifespan, that brings the number down to 150,000. So 150,000 would be your number uh, to go on. So all you have to do is mention your assumptions pretty clearly and then follow that with 
your thought process. How are you arriving at that number? Now, if a good interviewer would poke you through and ask your assumptions, they would ask like, how do you assume it's, it's like one in a thousand? Don't you think it's some communities do not get access to uh, healthcare or like a dentist? And you can answer saying, talking about an average. Like there may be Boston offices where the same doctor might have multiple dental chairs. Whereas there may be alternative offices like in the middle of Arizona, which does not have any dental chairs, does not have as many, like in a um, practice which serves the poor or the underserved. So you, they will poke holes into your assumptions and they want you to like, um, like defend yourself. It's not about right and wrong. It's about how well you're able to build a defense. It's about how well you're able to uh, support your answers with, with a reasonable, like logical conclusion. Um, and one resource that I would go to, which me and Nura put a lot of effort compiling was this ultimate dental interview compendium, which you see on your screen. It has questions, every possible question ever asked in a dental interview. So there are categories like, you know, behavioral is fit based on critical thinking, clinical, they have ethical scenarios, treatment planning, and then how to answer each of them. What are the questions commonly asked? So you will never face a question that's it that's outside an interpretation of what's over here. This is a resource I would go to and then have a friend or have us help you guys prepare for those answers. Okay, that's a very, very big deep down. Uh, I'll stop there and pass it back to uh, where we were. Yeah. Good job, you guys. It's like really, it's very helpful. I wish I had this list <laughs> to prepare. <laughs> I wish I had that too. <laughs> that's why I have it now. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you definitely, you guys have to uh, go through those questions. It, it's very exhaustive. Um, it's some of you guys are told that you have performance pressure. So that you can only deal with if you practice and practice and practice. So be comfortable with the, how you speak, be comfortable with how you look when you're, you know, on the video call. And I think it's great that it's Zoom interview now because it's like, you can actually put yourself in that situation and you're in the comfort of your house and you know there are challenges with zoom interview but then you can still practice with your uh, friends or your family and see what you're doing right what you're doing wrong it's also very important on how you look so i'll have Joey tell a little bit about why you need to look good yeah and what can you do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh i totally agree with nora you have to present yourself like a professional uh, by professional, I mean uh, not categorizing something, but just be comfortable with whatever you wear. Like, uh, like I would, I as you guys know, I have curly hair, and uh, I was told like you have to look professional, and curly hair doesn't really look very professional. But I always, um, I never wanted to like you know. I thought. I want to be myself so uh, I kept my hair like this I was confident pretty confident that I can portray myself uh, professional by keeping my hair like this so uh, it doesn't have to be like you know your that um, you have to look professional but wear nice clothes be yourself but uh, follow those guidelines to or like you know just look like a model that like how dr stevenson says uh prep yourself look uh, uh, like a model i mean uh, when i say model it doesn't have to be uh, like um uh, a lot of makeup just a subtle look and um, professional clothes do you agree nora yes, absolutely you need to make sure that you are presentable. It's it's very, very important. Keep smiling. Um, you know, be a very warm person. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk to a person who's who's not, you know, like who's just like looking at the camera when someone's talking. Be responsive, nod your head, you know, smile, laugh out. It's it's not it's not a job interview that you see in movies. It's <laughs> it's just a conversation. They're trying to yeah. see if they can work with you. Imagine if they're your faculty and you're in the school, how would you talk to them? You know, it's, it's, it's a very friendly atmosphere. Um, as Dewey said, dress up well, even if it's a Zoom interview, that doesn't mean that you can wear a t-shirt or something and just sit in front of the camera. It's important to groom yourself. Um, 
as Joey said, you don't have to go out of the way and, you know, just dab too much makeup on or something like that. For guys, all we ask is please take a shower and and, <laughs> and do your hair because there's nothing else that you <laughs> shave. can do. Shave and, you know, <laughs> make, make sure that you look presentable. For, and another thing that uh, I think I kind of noticed in all these video and, you know, calls is that don't wear anything that's too bright. Um, you don't want to take the attention off your face. You don't want to take the attention off. And, and make sure that you have like a very blank background, something that you don't want to keep things that are behind that will cause distraction to the interviewer. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so looking good is, is, is very, very important. And please do look confident. It's very important. So now we're going to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to say... Yeah, yeah Joey, go ahead. Yeah, like uh, for CEO... Um, this is for this year it's going to be uh, zoom interviews but apart from um, being apart from CU interviews as well if this covid situation gets better and once you start having normal interviews again i want to shed some light on that as well uh, once they start when school uh, universities start having normal you know, um, like uh, interview sessions uh, i would say for girls wear heels it gives you a nice uh, posture to your body so it's really important and um, faculty here really likes when you're uh, properly dressed with uh, good shoes, with good posture. And uh, also I would like to say like, you know, um, as you said, don't wear uh, something bright. Uh, like uh, I want to shed something on this. Uh, don't wear a uh, red suit, yellow suit. Obviously, no one would ever do that. Here, I don't even want to say this, but um, try to look a little different. Like you know, when I say that, a uh, little different. Um, uh, when I say that, it's like um, I have seen a couple of students who were wearing a light blue colored suit which uh, is different than uh, others, a little different. Uh, it makes you um, look different than others. It helps. I think a little bit it helps. Uh, but don't wear something out of the blue, like, you know, very different. I would say that. And uh, yeah, just, just uh, make it a point that if you can stand out from the crowd, it's not very difficult. I mean... Uh, like I said, just don't wear red or yellow or anything, but subtle colors, but uh, you can try to wear something different than black as well. That's just yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. Stick to solid colors. Um, yeah. Maximum you can go to is like a striped jacket. You don't want to go for uh, checked ones or like big designs, uh, a big pin over here. It's just that those are all very distracting. You don't want to do that. Uh, just try to look as professional as you can. Now, I don't want to take too much of the time. Uh, I know Karthik wants to start off with questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay, okay, just one addition for men, because we don't have a lot of options. <laughs> to look I would just say, try to stay conservative. Uh, these dentists have been in academic practice for a very, very long time. So their exposure to... Uh, the latest fads in fashion or in the streets of Bombay is <laughs> is a no no, <laughs> is null. So please uh, kindly like just a simple black suit, the black tie or the black bow tie, not a bow tie, a black tie or any other color tie would would do. Um, and please particularly take give importance to your shoes. Uh, this is not something I took seriously, but I realized that doctors, dentists, especially Dr. Stevenson, your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe a, a shoe with um, an Oxford in front of it, which, which has some shine to it. it. It would be worth investing at $5. So uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a couple of questions. I'm going to answer what I can and mm -hmm. that, my worth the rest to you guys. Uh, officially, the webinar is over right now. So people who want to drop off, you are welcome to. We have shared a, a link with a Google, a Google form link in somewhere in your chat. Um, if any question, specific question or like subject or question doesn't get answered in this webinar, you can post the questions on that link. We'll connect with you offline and make sure we get back to you. So the Google form link is to send in your questions, even if they don't get answered here, and we will make sure we send answers to all of them. 
for the rest, let's go in one by one. So, yeah. um, one question is, how do we prepare for radiographs? Are there any resources for radiographic uh, interpretation? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, you can uh, go through textbooks. Yeah, White and Faro is a great textbook. You can go through it. Um, there are a lot of YouTube videos as well for radiographic interpretation, like how to inter interpret the right words. Like, you know, the right words are very important, like the right mandibular periapical radiograph or an occlusal radiograph like those uh, putting it in uh, right, uh, st good statement is also important you will find some videos on youtube as well how to do it and uh, test book is always advisable okay uh, you do find the um, youtube videos for radiographic interpretations but of course uh, i'm going to text the name of the textbook to some of you guys so that's the textbook. Um, you can refer to that. They, it's a great textbook for normal landmarks. It's very, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is you don't want to look at a normal landmark and tell that it's a pathology. That's a blunder and that's something that you guys want to avoid. So you need to have proper knowledge about the landmarks and anatomy so that you don't do that. Okay. What's the next question, Karthik? Uh, we have a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, bench test courses are supposed to be taken after we receive interview from colleges or before that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Chewy. laughs> well, actually, I would uh, suggest you guys to go for a uh, bench test course before you get an interview call because uh, except for Colorado, other schools uh, give you a very short notice. Sometimes you also get a last moment calls if someone drops uh, an interview call you it just I, I have had a friend who got an interview call from CU just two days before the interview and bench so it's always better to be prepared so you have the time uh, and start uh, well before plan ahead of time uh, I did that for myself I uh, uh, went for uh, Stevenson before I got an interview call um, and started practicing. Uh, I put more efforts, obviously. I put more, huh, like, I think 100% uh, more efforts once I got the interview call, but at least I was aware of how to make an inter, I mean, a preparation, a class to prep an FGC or PFM. So, yes, it's better to start ahead of time. Yeah, I completely agree with Jui. Uh, it's very important to start practicing well ahead of time. But for you guys who are already been invited and some of you guys who have not taken a course, if you're wondering what to do, um, what you can do is, so Stevenson has his videos on YouTube, amazing videos. Uh, they really, really help you. They're all free and you just have to watch them, try to practice with that. And that really helps out for those of you who don't have time and and they don't have an availability because it gets booked really fast. So do that. And as Joey said, you guys really don't have, you don't want to put your time into anything else other than bench practice right now. Um, and if you're wondering how, how to do it at home, I did put up a video just recently on what you need to, for a home setup for bench practice. So you can look at that and get whatever you need to start practicing the bench. Yeah, uh, so one question is, mm -hmm. If you guys can mention, actually list out some questions that you faced. Can you say two or three if it's ethical to do so? What kind of questions? Like what category? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's say behavioral. Okay. Behavioral, uh, I would say they'd ask some questions I got was, um, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And then they asked me, um, what was it? I mean, is there any time you actually failed? Was the question they asked yeah. me. <laughs> and, they asked me too. Yeah. <laughs> so those are certain behavioral questions. And sometimes they are. So the, that, that's some of my examples of behavioral questions. Maybe Julie can tell some questions. Like behavioral. Yeah. Uh, some behavior questions. Uh, I think you can put that into categorized into ethical as well. Like they asked me that if you uh, are working, 
in our clinic and your colleague uh, is uh, doing unethical things like um, she's on drugs or uh, uh, he's uh, taking alcohol and then practicing what will he do so uh, for that kind of questions like you know they want to see how you judge a scenario and what will you do and uh, yes. so and uh, then they also asked me what kind of people uh, you gel along or the the kind of people you don't get along with yeah uh, <laughs> those type of questions then uh, they uh, they asked me like what uh, apart from dentist it's these are very normal i think like these are very normal questions like what would you do if you were not a dentist uh, what will you do if uh, if you don't get selected these are the type yeah. of questions another famous question that i want to address is um, i'm sure it's it's uh, something that's common in all schools um it's something where i ask you like you know you are in the clinic say that you're accepted and you're working on a patient and you know you're working with a particular faculty and then you're going to go on to the treatment plan but then the the faculty that you worked with yeah. is not present there's someone else and they tell you a different treatment plan how would you approach that is another question so these are all they're just trying to see uh, if they can work with you in the clinic so it's okay yeah. if you don't answer that in the right way it's okay if the so the thing about ethic ethics as i already told you is there's no right or wrong it's about what is morally right to you um so if they asked me that question i would simply say that i would go to my director and you know discuss it with him i'll tell i'll tell the director so in the us in dental schools how it works is that there is a director for the program and then there are like you know clinical directors separately for each group they group you into different groups yeah. so if a faculty is not present and if, a, if another faculty gives you a different treatment plan you can go to your clinical director and discuss it with him you don't have to make a decision right there so it's something that it just shows that you have knowledge about how dental schools in the us work so you can keep that in mind awesome um another question which people are asking is what kind of profile impresses an admit an interview committee so i think my understanding is if you're interested in an interview they already like your profile they already yeah. like your so it's it's yeah. only about like being present and making an impression in the interview plus the bench am i interpreting this right yeah yeah as far as uh, cu goes cu has a wide variation of profiles right currently in our batch like i want to say we have uh, the like the youngest one is like 25 year old and the oldest one is 50 year old we also have uh, currently a uh, graduate recently graduated uh, we also have a couple of phd students so you know uh, the profile is uh, there's a wide variety of variation of profile uh, but if you want to go like you know to be uh, precise uh, there's uh, on the cu website there are admission statistics for the international dental program where they have given an average of the gpa our batch has or the average of tofl score which our batch has and um, everything like you guys want to know it's uh, mentioned on the cu website and the i think it's under how to apply mm -hmm. Awesome. so and like uh, and like i said like you know there's nothing called uh, an ideal profile right it's once you i think once you get an interview call it's just about you and your personality yeah so kartik's right uh, the way you interpreted it if they if you've been if you're being invited they already like you um but they like you on paper they have not seen you yet they don't know who you are um so it's and it this time it's going to be a little tricky especially for the first two batches because it's going to be a zoom interview and then they choose you for the bench exam so you don't have both factors affecting your acceptance you have to clear the interview for you to get go to the uh, bench exam and i i think that should be really easy uh, just prepare really well uh, and keep the points that you we told you in mind in a, about what they like what kind of personality they might like uh, there's another question from dr vijay mm -hmm. sir that maybe joey can answer how much does community service affect your application 
it does affect like um, it just community service as such it can be dental non dental it does help uh, boosting your profile as such because um, for me in my profile i had done uh, a course where i was registered as a community health advocate and volunteered for uh, like um, 50 to 60 hours so it's uh, it's really it is really helpful uh, to you uh, to boost your profile because that is something different than others that you have done it also shows that how um, compassionate you are and you then uh, if you are doing some kind of community service or a volunteering thing it has to uh, relate to you like you just don't don't you just don't do it because you have to have certain hours of it you have to um, relate to it like you can also maybe portray it in your sop or your uh, essays that why you are doing uh, this service why is it so close to your heart or right. why are you promoting this service mm -hmm. so uh, it's really helpful and it also uh, answers uh, the questions like you know why you are doing the community service it's just not because you are having there's a criteria of completing those hours so it is helpful absolutely that's true okay we got a private question about um, what would you advise for reapplicants and uh, my my two cents is that reapplicants must stress on what has changed between their last application and this application that's number one and number two is that they must actually convey the fact that it is their perseverance it's their desperation that's getting them come back to the school again and again um so if they sufficiently communicate that think of that as a strength the perseverance as an weakness of having lost ones uh the committee is definitely going to value that and yeah i agree i completely agree with kartik it's um, the perseverance like how hard you are working for this and uh and what changes have it's a very common question i think in every uh, application every school asks this in their application what have you changed in your profile since the last time you applied so there has to be an evident change and it can be anything uh, a c course like uh, like not a, an online course a hands on course where you learned actually a uh, good thing or dentistry and uh, any like a social cause uh which you joined it can be anything but there has to be a good uh, change in your profile awesome we have a very interesting question uh, about something which we all struggle with is to what what questions can we ask the interviewer towards the end of the interview uh, <laughs> that is good question so uh nora you want to go with for it <laughs> should i go for it you go for it and then i'll add if there's something that i might want to yeah so you can go i um, like you know there are a lot of questions which uh, you can ask uh what i asked was i was very much into uh, community services and volunteering uh, opportunities so what i asked them was uh, if are there uh, there are any opportunities for international students to go uh, to um, out of uh, the state out of the nation uh, in places like haiti or where they, or there are not many uh, dental services available so that was my question to them them and it also uh, serves my purpose like uh, my profile was very much in volunteering and community services so you know i and i am keen into like even today i like you know i am a chair of community or uh, asda so that was my question to them uh, the other thing which you can ask is uh, what are the other uh, events conducted in the school just for fun purposes like you know maybe uh, you don't know so that also shows that how uh, you have you are keen into participating all these events that are interactive for students so you can ask them like what kind of events are conducted uh, for uh, uh for rejuvenating the uh, for rejuvenation of the students how can they uh, stress relieve themselves mm -hmm. and uh, you can ask uh, 
about research opportunities maybe uh like uh, are they open to uh, accept students and isp students for research uh, you can ask more about if you are interested in uh, you are having any particular research then can you continue the research yeah yeah uh what i want to add you to the is point uh, you guys know that uh, in colorado the pa interview panel is going to include students as well so it's very important to engage them mm -hmm. you can't just talk to the 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 person you know who is the center <laughs> it's important to keep him or her to be like the main focus but then you also have to engage them that shows that you can collaborate um when you're asking questions you can also ask them how was your integration with the traditional students or how is how is your relationship with them um what do you think about the diversity of this university or you can ask certain questions as you we said relating to your own interests um something that i am always interested is in special needs dentistry so i did a little research about the school and then i asked them like you know so and so so how can i involve myself in this so it shows them that you're very interested and you're also like creating that link with your own personal profile you're not just asking questions because you want to don't do that mm, yeah exactly that's good uh, admissions is a two way street so as long as they ask you you're going to ask yourself them questions as well one interesting question that i have come across a student ask was um i really like the concept of this collaborative teamwork based dentistry in the dental offices where i was shadowing does colorado also have the opportunity to experience that in the classroom or am i going to just be working with other isp students so it's mm -hmm. like it's like provoking them and telling them do you really think about collaboration and diversity which is like exactly what they should be asking you yeah take take one theme and and provocate them they they love it um yeah. they yeah all right also if you can a very good thing that uh, dr nura missed and she did i know is that she would take some time to read through who are interview panelists yes. uh, yeah yeah exactly talk, talk them on wikipedia and then write a oh, question thing about colorado is i don't know how it's going to happen with zoom but i know that when it was a in person interview they let you know who your interviewers are like yeah at the start of the day so yeah you can actually use that time while you're sitting there to quickly google them to ch check them up on linkedin see what where they are what what are they working as um yeah. what are they interested in it's it's always easier to create a bond it's better to, you yes. know has a common interest so that's something that i agree with nora i did that too <laughs> we had given uh, the who, the name of the and you need to know the name of your interviewer uh, it's uh, whenever you step in uh, it's uh, good to um, uh, like take their name and uh, do a handshake but this is not going to happen in the zoom interview but at least if you are knowing the name of your interviewer just address them Uh, rightfully it it uh, la leaves an impression exactly and uh, i know it's difficult yeah, to just know names no more about please do like <laughs> when you're addressing someone if you don't know their name and if you're in that critical situation just call them doctor or something like that but try to remember their names address them by their name it's it's you know it's better to do it that way um I I actually got reminded about something um so was about a couple of questions that you guys asked one was did you take any professional help and my professional help was Karthik so I'm going to make him talk about uh positioning which I think is very important in interviews okay yeah um probably we we also have come to the close of our interviews so there's one more question I want you and Joey to address mm -hmm. towards the end of which I'll answer the positioning question and the question is how do you answer the question why see you why see you oh my god i just can go on for answering can you give like bullet bullet points uh, which people can use <laughs> i mean uh, they asked me this question and i was very happy to answer this because <laughs> CU was my dream dream school, and you know, Coloradians are very proud of their state. You know, uh, 
except like also see you but they are very proud of colorado as such so you know you have to just like i am a person i love hike trekking so you know i would for me it was like a dream come true to go to uh, see you it's uh, just tell them like why see you because i know that see uh, school uh, dentistry uh, students are uh, dentist students are very stressed out they undergo a lot of stress so when i am in colorado uh, mountains are just an hour drive from uh, the school you can in fact uh, see uh, mountains from your CEO, sdm clinic as well so it's very stress relieving and i answered that you know it's very stress relieving to be when you are surrounded by nature it's like what else one wants when uh, like i'm not a this is exactly what i told them like you know uh, i'm not a city girl i love to be surrounded by nature and i just want to be here i just want i don't see myself anywhere else i love colorado i love the mountains i love hiking trekking so for me the whole of the interview was uh, they know that i am very passionate about dentistry but i just uh, were more about like what i love like it was what kind of person i am apart from being a dentist so i just praised a lot about colorado why see you because colorado is awesome Colorado is the place where I want to be. <laughs> Colorado is all about mountains. So, yeah, for me it was like this is where I always wanted to be. Right. So a couple of things that Joey said during this call that I want to summarize here for YCU is one she spoke about Colorado. Uh, definitely, Americans are very proud of what where they are from. So yeah. We want to address that. Um, and the second thing she said was. Uh, the number of students, so you can link that to diversity, you can link that to inclusion, you can talk about that. Um, another thing that she spoke about, so people in the Midwest, they're, they're extremely friendly. There's something about them. And so it's in Colorado, uh, you can address that friendly atmosphere, they are very welcoming. Um, so the environment that you'll be finding is very collaborative. It's, it's not, uh, you know, you can't find that dictation sort of teaching. It's not like that. Yeah. Um, that's another aspect about it. Another thing is, as Dewey says, so she's the chair of community, uh, Colorado's Astra chapter. So you are able to involve yourself in these extracurriculars apart from just dentistry. So they let you involve yourself in community service and involve yourself in all these team building activities. That's another thing. Um, Colorado also does have all these uh, externships where they send you to other places like Guatemala and all these places. So these are other factors about um, CU that you can consider. You can maybe see what you resonate with and add that to your YCU answer. And of course, be all excited about Colorado. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd probably add like, just two more things. So Colorado uh, University, if you've been there, is known for its artwork. And everybody knows that they talk very pr proudly about it. So there's one, I think, two balls in the middle of nowhere, which signifies something. I'm not sure what that is. Ball, it's <laughs> I know, meatball. They call it meatball. Yeah, meatballs. It's very famous. If you tell the interviewer, they're going to be impressed. Uh, yeah. I know there's hundreds of people over here, but still. And then they, they have, they, when they talk about diversity, it's not just like uh, Americans. I mean, diversity like blacks, whites, and then uh, rest of us. They also have like a center for Native Americans, Red Indians. So they actively invest in helping those communities as well, which are underserved, get access to good healthcare. Colorado University is different in the way that the dental school is very integrated with. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. I, I didn't want to say Red Indian. Uh, my bad. Yeah. Um, so Colorado University also has different. Uh, like the dental school is very integrated with the other in university as well. So you'll have interdisciplinary work that goes on, which is not very predominant in other schools where the dental school is extremely isolated from the rest of the school, uh, university. Uh, here, like uh, He's right. That word is the slur, but uh, you want to, the reason Karthik brought that up is because um, Colorado, just across the dental school, if I'm right, if I remember it right, they have the, ho they have a hospital, especially for native Americans um, that, shows a lot of inclusion you can actually talk about it in your interview yeah um so yeah so bring out these aspects about about ceo that might resonate with you uh and yeah it, it's pretty good 
All right. So anything else that we need to address before we end it? Yeah, nothing else. I'll just give my last few thoughts on positioning and then we can close the call. Um, I know that. Do we, is there anything you want to add? Mm, I think we pretty, uh, pretty much covered everything. So, perfect. Okay. Sure. Uh, so what is positioning? Positioning is something that's really, really important in your interview. It's what differentiates you. Positioning, the way you think about positioning is by asking the question of yourself as to what is the one thing that you want the interviewer to remember about you when you leave that room. Do they want you to, do they want to remember you as like the, the bald guy with sober answers, with a lot of experience and with head weight? Or do they want you to remember you as that, you know, chirpy young person who is, who is extremely involved in special needs dentistry? Or do they want to interview, like remember you as that person who had that polished seminar stoic and is extremely concerned about periodontics. So think of that one thread they, you, they want to remember about you. Like when, when Joey mentioned the, the Rubik's Cube, I'm pretty sure that every interviewer, even if they forgot that candidate's name, they would have remembered him for that Rubik's Cube. Rubik's and Cube, yeah, that's right. Exactly. You don't have to pull, pull off some stunt like that, but think about this one thread, this one line that explains who you are and which is very personal to you and that's the way they'll remember you. If you can get that across as this person, as, the, as this fighter or this you know, uh, hard worker or this person who's, who's really contrasted the differences between Midwest, he, keep, he kept talking about the Midwest versus the, the, the Bay Area. Something like that. If they can remember that one word. I, I want, it's, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, before I forget, I just want to tell you something else that in case you're not able to in case you're finding it difficult to come across something that will position you, um, that, that you're not able to do in that interview, a good thing that you can do is see, just scan the interview room, see something, talk about it. Like an example, at least it's something that I did was when I went for my interview in SIU and I was with my director, um, I saw this very small wooden carved box in the corner and I knew there was a loose box, but I kind of pointed that out and I was that's so cool. Like, how did you get that done? And you know, it's so different. And then he took it and he showed it to me and I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this done. Like when I get into dental school, I'm going to get a wooden box like this. Where do you get it from? The thing is the interviewers come across like so many students and everybody is giving them the same kind of answers. So if you do something like a little different, that will just like etch in their memory that this person did something and your, your face they remember. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you guys completely. Thank you, Joey. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, like, and we, I know we, we organized this whole thing within the last 24 hours. So yeah. really, I mean, it means a lot that you are here with us. Yeah. Uh, and no, sorry. I, I want to thank you guys for uh, giving me this platform. I am, I hope I was not uh, very, in, I mean, oh, too much of energy <laughs> because uh, sometimes I just uh, go out of the track and I just want to say so many things at the time. <laughs> so I hope I helped um, the, uh, my colleagues here very today very and I hope I answered those questions. <laughs> I'm sure we got a lot of information from you. Uh, and we have to thank you for, you know, being able to squeeze us into your schedule and be able to talk with everyone. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, I hope everyone is excited that I get the Zoom prep video. Um, it's a private video, so make sure you add your IDs. I've saved the chat. I'll make sure our team answers all the questions that you may not have heard. Uh, because of signal issues or other reasons, we'll like put them in bullets and reply back as an FAQ on our website. Uh, so you will get an answer, questions answered no matter what. Uh, and I think the last thing is so a couple of things to keep in mind for Zoom is that it's a two-dimensional medium. Uh, there's nothing, there's no difference between a, a panel interview and a signal. Um, and there's going to be signal reception problems like you witnessed today. So you might want to think through these things. How can we like overcome those we will address in our upcoming video finally one more time please do not forget to post your questions on the google form and leave your email ids that's the only way we will know that you were here and 
you have these questions that you want answered. Thank you so much, guys. See you again in Capital Simplified. Next webinar, which is going to be a reverse interview, where you can interview us and we will answer the questions live. Um, so good luck on that and bye. Bye, Joey. Bye, guys. Thank you for bye. joining us.